CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. At the end of May this year of our Lord, 1977... Another legend passed into history. The last of the great Orient Expresses, Europe's most famous railroad train, made its last run. This is a tale of two people who planned to be on that last run from Istanbul, Turkey, to Paris, France, and who found out with Robert Burns' mouse that even the best laid plans are at the mercy of fate. Or, even worse, men of no conscience. Put up your hands, please. <laughs> And don't move. Now, wait a minute. Whoever you are... Shut up. Inside. All right, but... Don't argue with him, Diana. That's a Stalonica 57 he's toting. What's that, Bob? A machine gun. Real bullets, too. Our mystery drama, Last Train Out, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Ann Williams. It is sponsored in part by Sinoff, the Sinus Medicines, and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. You must all be familiar with Diana Sherwood. Remember her as the wistful and winning child movie star of the 50s? Then, her amazing turn away from success and riches to go to college and take her degree. And later, go through a long apprenticeship as a reporter. Finally, the third stage, her return to the public in a new field, in television, as a news reporter and brilliant interviewer. Now, at the peak of her career, she's driving through eastern Turkey on special assignment with Bob Hart, her cameraman producer. An assignment whose wrap-up is planned to take place on the Orient Express. Can't you go a little faster, Bob? Well, what's the hurry, Diana? We're still on vacation. Oh, vacation. <laughs> Three short, glorious days. Oh, I love you. <laughs> all the shows we've done together. All the corners of the world we've poked into. And you wait till here to tell me. Hmm? When in Rome. <laughs> I got here. I learned to talk turkey. Oh, I'm not <laughs> even going to notice that. <laughs> Don't. Just concentrate on me. Oh, I intend to. For the rest of my life. Hey, I'm going to hold you to that. I want to kiss you. Not while you're driving. Well, why not? No, Bob, don't. Now you... Oh, look out, lame brain. Do you want to kill us? No, ma'am, but uh, what a way to die. You just keep your eye on the road. <laughs> what road? The one you're driving on. Now, you call this a road? It's a goat track. Well, you were the one who insisted on taking it. <laughs> well, I wanted to be by the water. Very romantic at sundown. And very late. We ought to get back to the main road as soon as possible. I think we really should be in Istanbul by now. Why? Because we have a whole section of the documentary to shoot on the Orient Express tomorrow. Remember? Well, of course, darling. Hey, the road's getting better. (laughs) I can give her the gun. Now, you satisfied with what we've filmed so far? Oh, yes. And the train footage should just button it up right. Mm. That's sad to think that romantic old train won't be running anymore. Yes. A lot of things sad about Turkey. Not for me. Because of us. Well, that's private and personal. <laughs> oh, no! What is this? Oh! Get your ball out! Hang on to me, Diana. Hang on! Bob? Bob? Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, yeah. Ooh, it hit my hand. Oh, I know. It's, it's bleeding. I, I can't seem to stop it. Oh, it's kind of dark. Is that me or No, is no, it... no. The oh. sun's gone down. Oh. How long have I been out? Oh, about, about 15 minutes. Mm. Oh, I've been frantic. There, has, there hasn't been a sign of another car or anything. Hey, hey wait a minute. How are you? Oh, I'm all right. You sure? Oh, darling, I hung on to you, and when you rolled over, you took the worst of it. You saved my life. But you, I'm so worried. Oh, honey, ease up. I'm not hurt that bad. Except 
except for the whack on the head and a couple of bruises on my thigh. I'll, I'll do. But you're bleeding. Well, okay, I need a couple of stitches, maybe, but uh, the cut's not deep. Now, look at that. <clears throat> How did I get out of the car? Well, you were still half conscious. You were able to help me just enough to get you out. Oh. How is the car? Oh, pretty much of a wreck. <laughs> Thank heaven I left my cameras and equipment to be shipped from Ankara by air. What are you trying to do? Get up. No. Oh, Bob, no. Darling, I'm all right, and I want to take a look at the car. Look, I, I don't want you to move. You might have a concussion. Don't worry, Diana. Oh, now, look, if I knew you were okay, you could sit here, and I could walk back to that village we just yeah, had. Yeah, well, let's see if we can ride first. Oh, wow. It is a wipeout. Front axle's gone, radiator's ruptured. Oh, and wait a minute. What is it? Wait, look, look up there at the top of the hill, through the trees. Someone just turned on a light. Oh. There's a house up there. Yes, I see. Look, darling, you wait here, and I'll go up and see if they have a phone. No, no, I'll do better than that. I'll come with you. Oh. Ah, this darn place was farther away than I thought. Hello, well, uh... Just cut across this terrace here. And uh, we'll try the French windows. Oh. Hey, the room inside's lighted. Oh, yes, but they have Austrian blinds. Hey, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's a chink here. Let me have a look. Yeah. Hey, it's crazy. That can't be. What is it? Now keep your voice down. Take a look. Two men. Let's knock. Hold it. Hold. Take a look at the one sitting at the table. Yes. Who is he? Well, I don't... What you mean? Oh, he looks like Sapiakov. Looks like? He's a dead ringer. Oh, good Lord, Bob. We've really stumbled onto something. Yeah. A hornet's nest. We're getting out of here. With a story like this? Do you know who this man is? Sure. Number three or four in the police bureau who came here on a little Russian-type lobby trip to Istanbul and mysteriously disappeared day before yesterday. Or defective. Well, whichever it was, he has Russia up in arms and the Western world on atomic pins and needles and the Turks in a blue funk. Now, let's not get mixed up in this, Diana. Come on, it's too big. Don't move. Hey, now, now wait a minute. Shut Whoever you... Uh, uh, we, we had an accident and, and we were looking... I said, be quiet. Inside. All right, but I... Don't argue with him. That's a Stalonica 57 he's toting. A what? A machine gun. Real bullets, too. Move. What is the meaning of this, Sergei? Excuse me, doctor, but I found them outside looking through the window. Doctor? Oh, you're just what we're looking for. My friend is hurt. Uh, yes, so I see. That is a nasty cut. You will need some stitches. No, no, no. All, all we need is, is a phone to get a mechanic and some transportation. But first of all, I must tend to your wound. Oh, allow me to introduce myself. I am Dr. Bulent Agdus. And you, of course, are Mademoiselle Diana uh, Sherwood, is it not? You know me. What educated man in Turkey does not know you, mademoiselle? Especially since you have honored Turkey by coming here to do one of your fine documentaries about us. Uh... Excuse me. Sergei, put away the gun. But I found them spying on you. At... Sergei! As you are, them, doctor. You will pardon me, mademoiselle Sherwood, and... Uh... Oh, uh, this is my... Uh, uh... My cameraman, Mr. Robert Hart. Ah, yes. Uh, if you will excuse me, this gentleman here with me was just leaving. Sergei, please see uh, my patient to the door. Uh, look, if you just let us make a phone call, you can go ahead with your patient. No, we were all finished. Sergei? Yes, doctor. Good night, Mr. Seaman. Now, just follow my instructions, and I'm sure you'll find your condition will improve uh, uh, rapidly. No, 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 don't say anything. I am more than glad to have been of help. Now then, won't you sit down, Mademoiselle Sherwood, while I have a look at the gentleman's injury? Oh, thank you. But, but while you're treating Bob, couldn't I phone for help? Unfortunately, no. Oh, why not? I have no phone. A doctor? This is my home, not my office. I value my privacy. Well, you, you don't seem to get much of it. Uh, what about the, uh, the patient who just left? What about him, Mr. Hart? 
Uh, I think what Bob meant is that if this isn't your office... Shall we uh, say that he is just an old friend who dropped by? Oh, yeah, okay. Well, sure, we don't we don't care about him, Dr. Uh, uh, Akdos. Now, all we want to do is get to Istanbul by the night. I'm afraid that would be very difficult. Please, let me offer an alternative. Why don't you allow me to invite you to be my guest for the night? I'm afraid that isn't possible. Oh, why not? Well, Mr. Hart and I must leave Istanbul tomorrow on the Orient Express. But the Express does not leave until evening. I really must insist that you be my guest. Uh, Well, I, I don't think you understand exactly, Doctor. Uh, Miss Sherwood and I are on an assignment from international broadcasting to deliver a documentary on your country. Oh, I know. I am aware that you have been here already for over two weeks. But the last part of our Turkish coverage is to film the Orange Express and transit. Yeah, and, uh, well, as I guess you know, it makes its last trip tomorrow night. I am aware of that. So, you see, we must get back tonight. Oh, I quite understand. But as a doctor, I must tend to that wound of yours before anything. Yes, Bob, please let him do that. Okay, okay, fine. Uh, as long as while he's patching me up, we make some kind of arrangement to get to Istanbul. Without a car and no phone, I don't really see how it is possible. There is also the matter of crossing the Bosporus to the Thracian side. Uh, well, just get us to the ferry. But how? Can't you have your man drive us in? I'm afraid I can't. Or won't. If you ask me, your invitation to stay sounds more like an order. Perhaps it is. Sergei! Yes, doctor. Cover me, please. Ah, the man behind the gun. Yes, Mr. Hart, I'm afraid after all you are right. My invitation is really an order. You recognized my patient, did you not, Mr. Hart? All right. What if I did? It is absolutely vital that Comrade Serpiakov's whereabouts remain a secret until we get him to safety. So you will stay as my guest, both of you. Until I do. But, Dr. Actus, you can't keep us here indefinitely. I have no intention of doing that. I can promise you, Mademoiselle Sherwood, that you would be free to leave here in the morning. And to catch my train. And to catch your train. Me? The way you said that, uh, what about Mr. Hart? Ah, that is quite different. Uh, Mr. Hart will be staying a little longer. What for? Shall we say as uh, evidence of your good faith. My good faith in what? In a little scheme which has occurred to me and which, the more I examine it, seems the perfect answer to all our problems. Yes, indeed, I think my little scheme will solve this dilemma for all of us. Diana and Bob exchange a glance. What is the smooth and oily Dr. Akdus up to? One thing has been expressed in the look they have exchanged, a feeling that I'm sure I and you in the audience share, that the insinuating manner of this strange doctor, if indeed he is one, is only a mask that conceals a man who serves no principles except his own. A bad enemy. Perhaps an even worse friend. I shall return shortly with Act Two. The three of them were frozen as we left them. Diana Sherwood and Bob Hart in the moment of exchanging their glance. Dr. Bulant Akdus, his dark, beady eyes glistening wetly as he considers them both, a secret smile curling one side of his mouth. Now, as the film of our tale starts to unwind again, the protagonists move from their still frame to action. I think my little scheme will solve this dilemma for all of us. What dilemma? Oh, come, Mr. Hart. It is useless to deny it. You have recognized that I am hiding under my roof the most wanted man in Turkey. Lavrenti Serpiakov is being hunted by every communist in Europe. I am committed to getting him to safety. Could I possibly allow either of you to leave here freely now that you know my secret? But we'll be beyond Turkey by tomorrow night. 
preserving a discreet silence about the biggest news story on the continent at this moment? <laughs> the answer is obvious. Oh, no, no, no. We are sitting, all three of us, on a bombshell. Why? Why all the intrigue and the cloak and dagger stuff? Look, why doesn't Serpiakov turn himself over to the Turkish authorities and ask for sanctuary? The risk is too great. Turkey stands at a crossroads at this moment. Our neighbor to the north, Russia, dominates the Black Sea with her navy. She would demand his return at once, and we are not in any position to refuse. Well, then go to the American consulate. They'd protect him. If we ever got him there alive, perhaps. Another point not to be debated, the risk is also too great. An international situation might be created. No, no, the answer is clear and has been decided. Serpyakov must first be gotten out of Europe to a country where he will be totally safe. Without a passport, without papers, without visas? No, it's crazy. The problem was enormously difficult before. But now, fortunately, it is relatively simple. Thanks to your coming here, providentially, as you did. Thanks to us? Yes. Ah, well, actually more directly to you, Mademoiselle Sherwood. You are going to be Serpiakov's safe conduct direct to America. Me? Oh, I'm afraid you're mistaken. Oh, I doubt it. I'm quite sure you are going to be perfectly agreeable, even anxious to help. When I explain. You'd better do that right now. I'm afraid not quite yet. My professional ethics dictate another pursuit for me. You have a nasty cup and quite a few abrasions which need attention. If you would follow me across my hall to my clinic, uh, we would put you in shape. Uh, no, I want to know what you're up to first. I think you will do it my way. Sergei! Uh, now look, just a minute. No, uh, darling, please. The cut still hasn't stopped bleeding. It's got to be taken care of. She is quite right, you know. The sooner I can suture it, the less scar it will leave in the future. Wait. <laughs> Shall we go and try to get rid of the bad blood between us? Eh? Oh, there. I think that should do very nicely. No pain? Uh, no, no pain. Now, I want to know what you're trying to get Diana mixed up in. Ah, uh, yes. Well, I would prefer to explain that to both of you at the same time. Why don't we go back and join the lady so I can explain to you both what a blessing in disguise you have turned out to be. So, you would like to know my plan. Very well. Tomorrow evening, Miss Sherwood will leave as planned on the Orient Express. With her will go Sir Pyakov, traveling as Mr. Hart. What do you mean, Sir Pyakov, traveling as Bob? How can he? Very simply. You have just had a quite serious accident in your car. Very good. We will make it appear a good deal more serious. We will say that Mr. Hart has been injured quite severely above the face and the head. I... A doctor living closest to the scene of the accident attended him. And quite naturally, since the damage is extensive, have had to bandage most of his head and face. Oh, can I freshen your drink, Mr. Hart? Yeah, well, maybe you'd better. You see, it occurred to me as soon as I saw you that both you and Serpiakov are approximately the same height and build. Another piece of luck. Uh, this uh, comrade of yours... Does he speak American? Ah, he won't have to. The mouth will be bandaged because some sutures had to be taken. We can even wire the jaws if broken. No, no, no. I, I see no flaws. I think personally it is an excellent plan. Once Serpiakov reaches Paris, arrangements already have been made by other interested parties which will clear him out of Europe safely. Now, there is just one major flaw, Dr. Octor. Uh, yes, what is that? What makes you so sure that I'll go along with your little scheme? Oh, I have no doubts about that. I'm sure you can both guess why. You'll be holding me as hostage. Exactly. And besides, as a doctor, I will travel with her to Paris, ostensibly to take care of my patient. But to make doubly sure I uh, behave. Shall we say, cooperate? But what if I refuse? How can you? 
These are desperate times, Miss Sherwood, and make no mistake, I am a desperate man. I lay my life on the line. And I value it highly enough so that I have no compunction about who dies to protect it. Besides, the end itself is good. Once Serpyakov is safe from reprisal, you will realize that he has information of incalculable value to the, uh, to the democracies, uh, particularly yours and Mr. Hart's country. All right. Doctor, you win. Do you think perhaps you can send one of your men to get our bags from the car? I will have it taken care of right away. And uh, may I say that I think you have both been very wise. Oh, one other thing. I don't know, of course, how far your uh, regard for each other has taken you, but I am sure you will realize under the circumstances that you will be shown to separate rooms. The judgment is not one of moral principle, just mere precaution. <laughs> Oh, just, just a minute. I. Oh, who is it? Open the door. What is it? Oh! Ah, uh, waits for no one. But I. What are you doing here? Comrade Laurenti Serpiakov, at your service. <laughs> the commissar has taken the fancy to you, mademoiselle. Get out, Kulak. You have been paid. Leave us alone. For a show, comrade. I wish you luck. Get your hands off me. Stay in my arms until we are sure he is gone. What? He's gone. Yeah, don't be too sure of that. And keep your voice low. He may even be watching. How? There is at least one keyhole in every door. And every wall has ears. Sergei is a Russian. I do not trust him. You expect me to trust you? Will you please let me go? Uh, I'm sorry. The masquerade was necessary. I had to see you. I have heard of Dr. Ragdu's plan. Naturally. Where is the doctor now? Istanbul. He is going to report the accident and set everything in motion. So? So. I have taken this opportunity to bribe the guard to see you. Why would you have to bribe the guard? <laughs> Do you think I am any less prisoner than you or your friend Hart? You? Prisoner? Of whom? Of Dr. Atlas, of course. I don't understand. He's the one who's helping you escape. <laughs> escape? <laughs> uh, once I believed in that, but no longer. Because of what you Americans would call the double cross... You have given him the opportunity, you see. I have. Oh, not directly. You are the victims of circumstance, of course. But listen to me. If we go through without this plan, do you think for one moment I would ever get to Paris? I would be lucky to get as far as Tara, Zagora, or Sofia. Wherever the express stopped in Bulgaria, I guarantee the communist authorities will be alerted and ready to arrest me. Who would let them? Dog those, of course. Do you not see the plan? It is so neat. I will be arrested for traveling under disguise on a false passport so I can be removed from the train quite legally and quietly. Once back in communist hands, I leave it to you to imagine what will happen to me. They, they wouldn't kill you. No, I doubt it. We are not under Stalin anymore. All I lost in Siberia, as you see, my ring finger. Ah, no, no, today we are more civilized. At best, I would simply become a non-person. No job, no means of support, a beggar. At worst, a patient committed to an institution. Both living deaths. Why should Dr. Aktus want to turn you back to the communists? Isn't he helping you escape them? Mademoiselle Sherwood, Dr. Aktus is not a man of conviction, except where he himself is concerned. He is an opportunist and a tool of the highest bidder. 
The only thing he ever wishes to protect is his neutral standing. I am worth more to the communists, but apparently it is only bad luck I fall into their hands. He has it both ways, the money, and if you call it that, his reputation. Do you understand? Oh, I'm not sure. If you really are a, a prisoner, how could you come and visit me? Number one, because I am not supposed to know that I am a prisoner. And number two, because among a certain class of men, money is the magic key to anything. Oh, with a diamond ring, which is worth more than I care to think of, I bribed Sergei. Well, he's suspicious about why you want to talk to me. Not since he was half drunk from drinking with me. And because of the reason I gave him... <sighs> you are beautiful enough for any Russian to understand that. I see. Well, now that you have seen me, what purpose has been served? I want you to trust me. But I do not trust you. I have no time to try to convince you. I have little time left. But I have a plan for all of us. The only one I can devise, which I believe, which will give us a chance to escape with our lives. Will you at least listen to that? It was George Villiers, the first Duke of Buckingham, who coined the phrase, The Plot Thickens. His actual quote was, I now the plot thickens very much upon us, which indeed it does and has, to a point where I'm afraid we must wait to see what happens until I return shortly with Act Three. Duke of Buckingham, whose thoughts we borrowed so shortly ago, had one other remark that history had recorded. The world is made up for the most part of fools and knaves. Now, while I don't share his pessimism, the world in which we have become engaged here may be a lot nearer to his than yours and mine. Let's return to it and find out just what it is that Comrade Serpiakov wishes Diana Sherwood to listen to. Very well, Mr. Serpiakov. I'm listening. If I can pass as Mr. Hart with the head covered with bandages, then so can he pass as me. It is only a matter of changing places. Well, how can you do that? Ah, leave that to me. What is important is that he must be ready when the moment comes. Here. Here are bandages. You must get them to him. How? Ah, I must leave that up to you. <laughs> How can I trust you? Look, look. You are a woman of the world. And you know that between the grindstones of power, individuals become dust and are lost in the wind. I know that if I follow the doctor's plan, I am doomed. But if you don't... I'm ready to take my chances. I have been ready to do that since I walked away from a lifetime spent in a cause in which I no longer believe... All right. How, how will the change be made? Just before they take me down to the ambulance... Get up, Sir Jacob. Ah, the devil. There is no time. You must let me know if you get this to Mr. Hart. I am coming in. The doctor is returning. Well, I'll do my best. You but... must get word to me if he has them and will be ready. We can't wait, comrade. But how? Hurry, think. Put your arms about me quickly. Hmm? Think. I'll, 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 I'll drop my club by your, your door. Good. You will have to leave your love dreams for another time. The doctor is just returning. I don't care about the doctor. But I do. Come. Your glove. My glove before your door. And I trust you slept well, Mademoiselle Sherwood. I wouldn't put much trust in that, Dr. Octus. Or in me? Such a pity. Now... I am allowing you to see Mr. Hart on your promise that you will try nothing foolish. 
Well, I can promise you that, at least. After all, everything is arranged. I have reassured your network people that you are, well, as well as can be expected. You have been checked out of your hotel. The accident has been reported. The car paid for. And my private ambulance is waiting to take us all to the ferry across the Bosphorus and onto the train. Oh, with the exception of Mr. Hart, of course. Uh, his room is just around this corner here. Now, uh, remember to be careful what you say. I only want to tell him I love him. And please to follow orders. <laughs> Hamid, be careful with that gun. And open the door. I apologize for that fool. He is gun happy. Must he be the one to guard, Bob? Unfortunately, my resources are not unlimited. But your intended husband will be quite safe if he is careful. Wait, open the door, Hamid. May I see him alone? Where a beautiful woman is concerned, I am a sentimentalist, but not a fool. After you, mademoiselle. But I will stay back by the door with Hamid. Diana. Oh, darling, how are you? Oh, tolerable. Hmm. Well, the room's okay, but up until now, the room service was lousy. <laughs> Oh, honey, you all right? Oh, yes. Everything is all right. What you just stuff in my pocket? Yes. I said uh, everything's all right. Dr. Octus has given me every assurance that you'll be all right. In 36 hours, as soon as we reach Paris, you'll be set free to join me there. You trust this bird? What else can we do? I, uh, I only have a minute, darling. Just hold me. Hold me close. Closer. Before I go, ask for your tobacco pouch. Kiss me goodbye. Oh, do I have to be asked? <laughs> What's in it? A note. Au revoir, darling. Uh, it won't be long. Long enough. Uh, I just wish I had a smoke. I am afraid I must break up this tender farewell. However, at least in exchange, I can offer you some cigarettes. Yeah, thanks. But uh, coming from you, they'd probably be poison. No, I'd prefer my pipe. Oh, I guess I lost my tobacco pouch in the accident. Oh, for heaven's sake, I almost forgot. I was just bringing you that. What are you doing with it? I don't know. I must have picked it up after the accident or something. I, I found it in my sling bag. I, I think it's still here. Oh, yes. Uh, well, glad to get rid of it. Smelling up my whole bag. Here. Just one moment, please. I will take that. This would not be a gun by any chance, would it? Well, why don't you open it and see? One can't be too careful. Ah, of course. A briar pipe and a beauty... And unlike the lady, I like the aroma of your tobacco mix. You must let me try it when we have more time. Oh, your pouch, Mr. Hart. Mm. And now, mademoiselle, we really must go. Come in, the door. Au revoir, darling. You sure you understand? Don't worry. I'll follow instructions. Don't leave this door until you are relieved, Hamid. Khalud Kemar will be here early in the afternoon with some men. Uh, come, mademoiselle. We will go down and have some coffee while we are waiting for Sergei to bring the ambulance. Uh, but first, I must see Sir Pyakov for a moment. Uh, this is his door here. Excuse me. Sir Pyakov? It's Dr. Agduz. Open up. Oh, you dropped your glove, mademoiselle. Ah, what's the matter? Something wrong? Oh, nothing. I just dropped my glove. Uh, allow me. I will please. get it, you drunken fool. You can hardly stand up. Didn't you drink any of that coffee I sent up? I don't want coffee. You'd better get hold of yourself. We're leaving within the hour. Do you understand? I understand the lady dropped her glove. All right, all right. I said I would get it. Here. Oh, very well. Get as drunk as you want. It will save me using the anesthetic. But try to stay awake a few more minutes. I will be right up with the bandages. I'll be waiting. Got everything ready. Is uh, Mademoiselle... You need uh... have no worries about her. She sees things our way now. Am I right, Mademoiselle Sherwood? Oh, yes, indeed. Comrade uh, Sapriakov can be sure I intend to do my part. Dr. Octus, what's wrong? Ah, Sir Pyakov, the drunken fool, passed out. I had to bring Hamid down with me. Sergei! Yes, doctor. You and Hamid get the stretcher and go upstairs to fetch him. We will have to carry him down. 
Mr. Hart. It's not the invisible man, though I may look like it. I am Serpiakov. Yeah. So I gather from the headdress. Come. It is time to change places. We must hurry. Hey, how did you get past my guard? He has gone downstairs to bring up the stretcher for me. Leaving the door unlocked? A fortunate oversight. Come. You must get to my room and stretch out on the bed. Remember, you are dead to the world. And what about you? I will take care of myself. When that fool with the gun who is supposed to guard you comes back, I will break his neck and escape. I still have other friends and other ways. It is the best way. Now hurry. I'll hurry. But I'm not sure it's the best. Look out behind you. What? Ah. Hurry it up, Sergei. Get him in the ambulance. What's wrong with him? Sir Pyakov, dead to the world, drunk. Hurry, Sergei. Come on, Hamid, lift your end of the stretcher higher. No, no, watch his hand. His hand? Yes. What is it, mademoiselle? His left hand, the fourth finger. Oh, yes, it is missing. That is an old accent. Ah. You are very observant. Thank you. I will take care of bandaging that on the way to the station. If someone had noticed that, Comrade Serpiakov would never have passed for Mr. Hart, would he? <clears throat> All right, Sergei. Hold it a moment. I'll see if that fool has sobered up enough to get him into the wheelchair. Halt! Stand ready. Dr. Boulin, Agnos? Uh, yes? Lieutenant Ertan, Istanbul Police. Can you identify yourself? Well, certainly. Here are my papers and the passport. Quite correct. These are in order. The lady? Oh, my name is Diana Sherwood. Oh, yes. Your television crew is expecting you on the train, mademoiselle. But uh, where is Mr. Hart? Uh, if you will come with me, Lieutenant, I will show you. Mr. Hart has met with an unfortunate accident in his car, from which Mademoiselle Sherwood managed to escape without serious injury. As you see, Mr. Hart was not so fortunate. He was quite severely injured. You are quite sure that man under those bandages is Mr. Hart, Dr. Hartus? Of course. Mademoiselle Sherwood can verify that. I am not asking you, Mademoiselle. I'm asking you. Very well, I am his doctor. Who would know better? Of course, this is Mr. Robert Hart. I think that will do, Dr. Akdus. You are under arrest. On what charge? For the moment, falsifying a passport will do. I do not believe this man to be Mr. Hart. I believe him to be Commissar Lavrenti Serpiaco. You must be crazy. Mademoiselle Cher will tell this idiot that we cannot be held up. That it is imperative for you oh, to... Lieutenant, he's right. I can't tell you how vital it is to Mr. Hart that, that we make this train. Have no fear, mademoiselle. I think if we hurry, we can get to the police station, straighten things out, pick up the real Mr. Hart, and still make the Orient Express on time. The real Mr. Hart? Certainly. It was his telephone call that brought us here. And I'm sure by now he has reached the police station in safety. Oh, goodbye, Istanbul, Paris. Here we come. Bob Hart. Yes, Diana Sherwood. Will you stop being cool, collected, possessed, and pompous and explain to me just what happened? <laughs> Elementary, my dear Sherwood. Bob, didn't you get my note in the tobacco pouch? I did. And the bandages you stuffed in my pocket. Well? Well? When Sir Piakov came to make the switch, I got to thinking, so uh, I just called cocktail. You what? Yeah. Listen, up until your try, I figured my chances were zero. You know, Akdus was going to have me killed the moment his gunsel came back. So, I was all ready with my little weapon. What weapon? A bar of soap in my sock. Makes a perfect sandbag. You know, I saw it somewhere on the big glass tube. So I conked Sir Piakov with it, and then I lugged him back to his room before the muscle boys realized anything was wrong. And when the guard came back? 
Well, I was pretty expert by then. I left the door open, and when Hamid poked his knucklehead in, pow, pow. <laughs> yeah, well, then I called the police, and, and darling, here we are. Oh, but why, Bob? Why? Why take all that risk from the other way? Because my love, Serpiakov, would never have turned himself in. This boy wasn't reformed. He was running for his life. Anyway, I've always wanted to uh, sandbag a real live communist. But most of all, because... Because? Because I didn't want to lose you. I knew the moment Octos handed Serpiakov over to his fellow commissars, he'd have to waste you as well as me. And that's one way. I wasn't going to let this production end. Oh, darling. I owe you my life. As long as you feel that way, I'm taking it over from now on. That, as they say in the film business, is a wrap, which means the story is told. The last shot is taken. The film is in the can. The actors go home, the studio sets disappear, the lights go out, and the Orient Express fades out of reality and into the pages of history. I'll be back shortly. As it happens, Serpiakov did find temporary sanctuary in Turkey and eventually made it to America and a kind of freedom he had never known. Dr. Akduz lost his freedom, of course, on multiple charges, including abduction and forcible detention against a person's will. And Mr. and Mrs. Hart, as Diana Sherwood very shortly became, got an exciting and dramatic ending for their documentary on Turkey. Our cast included Ann Williams, Earl Hammond, Robert Dryden, and Ian Martin. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. Impossible to see anything. Heavy overcast below. Losing altitude fast. How about if I hold the button down on radio and leave it open to... Hey, hold it a minute. Cloud break. Yes, I'm over land. I... Holy Toledo, I'm right on top of you. Hold your hats and stand by. I remember the plane landing and then shooting sideways before I had time to cut the engines. I could feel the water nose split and was fighting desperately to keep my control. I remember slithering sideways straight for the control tower and resting her somehow out of the skid. And then she was tipping forward. There was a tremendous ripping crash. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs> 